Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will introduce to you the Tools tab under the menu bar. What kind of functions are there, you ask? Well, the functions here are actually different output settings. Also use of some special tools such as simplified meshes. First, let's take a look at the 3D Snapshot tool. When we open the 3D Snapshot, a window will pop up. You can see that there are three contents above which are image, rotate animation, and album. I will mainly introduce to you the first two contents. The first one is image. Here is an image from the right viewpoint. You can also add other viewpoints, such as front view, quarter left view, etc. We can also add custom viewpoints to the 3D snapshot. on the drop down button on the far right to add a custom view. Then we can save the images. Before you can save, you need to set up its output. Firstly, whether all colorway effects need to be outputted. As for colorway effects, I will introduce this later. Then the size of the image needs to be selected here, or you can customize it yourself. Choose the size of your image and whether you want a transparent background. Transparent background images, the file format must be PNG. If you save it as a JPG, we cannot have a transparent background. This is something to be aware of. In addition, images can be saved directly or rendered locally. Local render takes a lot of time so we can use Cloud Render for convenience. Okay, let's look at the rotation animation. It will rotate 360 degrees from the current view of the 3D window. If the view in your 3D window is changed and the 3D snapshot is open again, the rotation view will also see this change. It keeps a synchronized effect with our 3D windows. Then we can select any of our parameters to change. And whether the export is animated or in sequential images. We can also choose the direction of rotation, as well as the number and times of rotations, etc. In exporting the rotation animation, we can also choose the size of the video. And whether we need a background, and so on. Now, if we need to export this with a transparent background, we need to change the file format to GIF. This allows us the option for a transparent background. This is where you can choose whether or not you want to incorporate colorway animations as well. Try this out for yourself after this tutorial. Also, there are options for direct save, local render, and cloud render. Because it's a video, it outputs 30 frames every second. So if you render the video, it will take a little longer. Of course, you can choose to save it directly. This means that the video in the preview window will be saved directly. But its realism is definitely not as good as in the rendering. Now let's look at the second tool, which is the 2D version of Snapshot. You can select the properties according to the content of the 2D window and save it. The third tool is offline rendering. Offline rendering is also related to rendering in 3D Snapshot. Offline rendering allows you to adjust image properties such as lighting, rendering quality, and more. And you can preview it in the rendering window on the left. So let's do that. For example, let's change the color of the clothes. It then synchronizes under offline rendering. You can find that there is still a certain gap between offline rendering and the real-time rendering effect in our 3D window. Let's adjust the viewing angle in the 3D window. You can see that the image in the rendering window will also be replaced synchronously. So if we decide that we like this view, and we don't want to move the view of our rendering, we can just click here to lock the view. 
Then, if you move around in the 3D window, the viewing angle of the rendering window will not change. If the image is large, it will take a little longer to render several images simultaneously. If we just want to see a local effect, we can choose Regional Rendering. Select a region and render only that region. In this way, the computer will perform faster local rendering calculations. When the adjustment is done, you can click on the final render and export the final rendering. Three options in the middle are for editing images and lighting. The first is to render the image. Here you can select the image size and its orientation. You can also customize the size here and whether our background needs to be transparent. You can also make adjustments to the render properties here. For example, if you want the rendering done by CPU or GPU. We can choose the CPU usage right now. If it takes up a lot of CPU when rendering, it will cause us to be unable to do other work and slow down our computer. So we can adjust the CPU usage. For example, if we adjust the CPU usage to 50%, then we can do some other work while the rendering is happening. Here we can also set the finished rendering conditions. This includes the noise value and maximum rendering time. As soon as one of the conditional values is reached, the rendering will stop. If the CPU usage is reduced, the rendering time required to achieve the same quality will be a bit longer. Render times need to be adjusted according to specific requirements. Rendering quality can also be adjusted. You can think about if you want fast outputs or a higher quality. Here, you can choose between light caching or brute force rendering. And if we choose brute force rendering, the number of calculations will be more. So therefore, the final effect will be better. However, the rendering time will be a bit longer. We can also adjust the bounce number. The higher the number, the better it will render. Now for the lighting properties. All lights used for rendering will be shown here. It currently only has one dome light. If you need to edit the light, you can go to the light library to select the lights. You can select from the presets and get a good lighting arrangement here. In addition, you can also alter the lighting arrangement based on this preset. Click the third button here to add a light. You can add an area light here and set its properties. For example, you can increase its width and its height. Now let's turn on sync rendering and take a look. Now you can view the effect of the lighting. According to the lighting effect you're after, we can go back and adjust the selected lighting. There's not only area light, but also other types of light sources. such as spherical lights. This is a 360 degree surround lighting effect and the spherical light is softer than other lights. Here we can set its radius, intensity, color and so on. The direct light will be much stronger this light shines on the whole 3D world and is kind of similar to sunlight. So when we add a directional light, we generally need to slightly lower the intensity. We can also find that the light produced by directional lighting is relatively harsh. So you can soften the shadow edges here. Now we can look at the spotlight. The spotlight is like a flashlight or a focused light on the stage. you'll see that the shadow also has some very harsh edges. This gives a kind of stage effect. To make the lighting less harsh, we can adjust the shadow radius. See here, after I adjust the shadow radius, the edges have become softer. You can adjust the angle of the penumbra for the harsh spotlight. 
we can make this edge a little more blurred and it won't be as sharp as before. You can try out these lights for yourself. Now, you can turn the lights off here in the offline rendering scene. This way it doesn't block our view. Next, we will look at the animation editor. This can be applied when you're trying to create a runway animation. First, open the animation editor, which will have the video editing track below. Tracks here include avatars, cameras, and colors. We can add an action to the avatar. Click OK. And then we'll start recording and do a little demo. You'll find that there is another track here. This is the clothing track, which is the action of the clothing simulation. The second track is the avatar's actions. The third track is the camera actions. For example, you can add a camera to it that matches a female runway show. The last track is our colorway track. This can add different colorway effects on different keyframes. And then we see here in the middle, the first button is the recording button. It records the animation and the cloth simulation. The second button is play. Here you can set the playback speed. You can choose to set the display in seconds or frames. Some of the properties of the animation can be edited here, including animation, camera colorway, and other content. All right, the next thing we're gonna look at is the colorway set. Let's just center our avatar a bit and we can work on our colorway. So colorway is to match our current garment with different colors and, and textures and graphics, things like that. This includes the content of our current materials, such as fabric, top stitching, patterns, etc. So we can add a new look here. Just click add. Then change the fabric color now let's press update. In this way, we can see we have two colorway effects. Like the 3D snapshot just before, there will be an additional colorway style on display. The dress is relatively simple, so it only has two variables to edit. When we click save, it will automatically jump to the 3D snapshot. Then we can output this colorway effect. We can output it as an image or give it some rotation animation. Now let's look at simplified networks. At present, the particle distance is very large. Let's set the particle spacing to 5. Then turn on the mesh view of the garment and then press simplify meshes. The interface here will give us some information about simplifying the meshes. For example, the particle distance scale and the max particle distance. Click OK and then it can be simplified. We can see now, compared to previously, the corresponding particle spacing has become larger. OK, that's where we're going to stop with the tools. In the next lesson, we will give a brief introduction about measurement. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and share. I'll see you in the next one.